My name is Wenke. I studied um, architecture and art in Paris. And, um, you know, well, actually I started first art, but then I got an advice, why don't you do architecture? Okay, why not? Then you can do everything, you know, because I was also interested in industrial design. And then I, uh, I did that, I studied that, and it's very taking. So art was a little bit in the, obviously lots of drawings, 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 but not like, you know, you have a canvas, you have a theme, and yet you go for it. So, um, and uh, for that, you know, uh, lockdown and Tom got, uh, got me to do that again, and um, for which I'm very, very thankful. And the other thing is why art at all, because during lockdown, everyone, we all had reflections on life, on us, and um, I had once an accident and lost my memory. And uh, this way, you can tell stories because all painting has a story on its own, but it tells also a story. So um, I think that is the most important thing that because I did for a while, I did not know my name. And uh, I did not know what I did do the week before. And so someone did tell me, and that is an empty feeling, a really hollow feeling. So it's nice to document. It's kind of a diary, a diary and um, uh, an expression of your time and the being there and then of the zeitgeist. So it's not only personal influence, but it's uh, influence coming through books, news, and all that you filter as an artist and you bring that onto a canvas or any other media. And, um, and that's the story. It's like a song. It's the same thing. Very good. I'm Tom. I'm an artist and a veteran and um, came to art through um, with the Soldiers Arts Academy. So came to art through art therapy. So that was the sort of start of the journey. So a bit like yourself, you know, where you're just trying to find uh, a way or a, a way through the, the sort of things you're suffering with. Um, and a plain bit of paper was originally put in front of me and it was too overwhelming, so I had to get up and walk out. So that was the sort of start that made me think, why couldn't I, you know, draw or paint or do something? So that then led me on to, a, you know, starting to learn sketching and drawing and you know, thankfully, given an opportunity to do some, some art with the Soldiers, Soldiers Arts Academy. Mm. And that introduced me to yourself, where I could yeah. see you as a very talented artist by the pumpkin drawings, <laughs> yes. the charcoal drawings. And Tom was my teacher <laughs> online. So that was, that was the sort of start. And, um, you know, from there, I, you know, just we, we managed to get together to talk about on through Zoom, you know, the, the idea of having, a, having an exhibition and to create art and hopefully to help other people. Um, so that's really how it all sort of started um, and I've been fascinated by art 26 years I'd served in the military and never picked up a, a pencil or anything in that time so it was actually I've done more art probably in the last you know X amount of years than I've, than I've done at all in my life so um, and just continuing now I want to continue to grow more exhibitions more concepts, more ideas, and that's the thing is, there is so much I think I've got inside that I want to paint, experiment, draw, try. Mm. There's so many different mediums as well, which is exciting. There's digital art now that's out there. Um, NFTs, you know, there's, mm. there's the and whole raft. You're here. very young. Kurosawa <laughs> had his first painting when he was 70. Oh, yeah. well, I've got, I've got 20 years. Before he was years. an artisan now. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, and yet that's the thing, age, it doesn't, there's no barriers, so, you know, um, I was fortunate to go to the National Gallery the other day and I saw Monet's paintings and mm. Caravaggio's and, you know, Rembrandt's that, you know, fascinated me really from, from books and uh, that's, that's the, the sort of start of the journey really. So, yeah, so here we are today, but yeah, there's a lot more in there, but I think that's just a, a little sort of flavour really sure. of the... You know, uh, I mean, veteran, you know, it's, um, it is the intensity of your 
of the experiences in life yeah. that uh, actually yeah. that makes you an artist. It's not necessarily a university, no, or no. it's not necessarily you know any kind of formation. Yeah. It is life, yeah. and uh, you you channel yeah. feelings, experience, etc. Through uh, you know through you through yeah. your through your soul yeah. and um, you know before I uh, just before I started the SAA the soldiers art academy um, uh, we just did some doodles you know in yeah. this, uh, you know there was this campaign uh, paint your uh, lockdown hero yes so yeah. I started with Attenborough <laughs> and then yeah. I thought oh hmm, wait a minute we don't need to look that far so my grandfather was quite good yeah. You know, my grandfather, he was a um, soldier yeah. and he was um, in, uh, he was marching yeah. to Stalingrad wow. through the cold, you, yeah. know, you just mentioned it, yeah. through the cold mm -hmm. and um, he was taking care of the horses, he was raising horses hence. Yeah. And um, so he was taking care of the horses and after a while there were no horses anymore, they were all eaten. Yeah. And um, and then, uh, gladfully, you have to say, he got shot through the lung. So there he was. And my grandma got the news, you know, that uh, he, his dad, he got shot and um, tragically, you know, in field hero. And, uh, but luckily, a Russian soldier picked him up mm -hmm. and because he was quite tall and he was, um, he would be useful for work. So he picked him up and he got into the Lazarus and um, uh, close to Moscow and uh, he had to work there two and a bit years. Mm -hmm. And then after the war, the gate opened and he could just walk home. And so that's what he did. He had yeah. no mobile phone to say, honey, okay. I'm coming. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just like, okay, yeah. where is home now? So he walked and walked and walked. And, and then he arrived and my mom, who was just actually conceived before the war, was just uh, five years old. And she's like, mommy, mommy, a stranger is coming up the drive. And my grandma just dropped the buckets, just yeah. like, oh my God, coming from the field wow. of death. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, so, um, and so I wanted to uh, paint him and he had a long life and then at the end um, uh, he felt that he would, it's the end. Mm. And so he, he asked um, my aunt, please schnapps and a cigar. Because, you know, as a soldier, that was the delight. Yeah. Cigar, that cigarette. was enjoyment. That was yeah. escape. Yeah, yeah. And so he had a cigar. Yeah. He had his schnapps. Mm -hmm. Put it down very nicely and neatly. Head on the pillow. Died. Wow. And that, I thought, was beautiful. Yeah, peaceful. Yeah. And it cannot just fade away like this. Yeah, yeah. So... I thought that has to go onto a canvas, yeah, wow. and uh, because it has a story, yeah. it's a story, it's, and it's yeah. his song of life. Yeah. And um, and he was, you know, in his nineties, so uh, it was. You have to bring that. Good. You have to put that up. Yeah. It does. It's well. We'll see. <laughs> There'll be somewhere for it. Yeah. I can yeah. put that up. It's an amazing story. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, t I bet you can tell stories. <laughs> Well, How did you get like your that. MBE? MBE? Yeah. Oh, well, so that was through the military. So I did 26 years, Royal Air Force, mm -hmm. and was, I'd done various sort of fundraising activities and was doing some work when I was based at NATO in Northwood, Middlesex. So mm -hmm. there was some work I did there that I got put up for it. I didn't know, and it was quite strange. I got a phone call at home. Um, from someone very senior within the, uh, the, the base that I was at at the time. Yeah. And he just said to me, and he was, a, he was a Dutch admiral actually, he said, you've been given a national award. Oh. And uh, I started laughing 
because I knew he was, he was always one that would come in, he'd come in and sit down and say, hey, hello Tom, how's everything today, you know, what's happening? And we'd have a little chat and then he'd go up and he was a very busy man, he, he went on to become sort of Admiral of the Fleet for the, for the Dutch Navy. And, um, but it was, yeah, I then got another phone call and they said, you've been given an award and that was it. I got, you know, it was a gr very humbly and gratefully received the National Award of, the, of wow. an MBE, which was amazing for the military division. Um, surprised the family. We had a, had our day up at the palace. Um, oh my goodness! Tell and me from the about queen, that. yeah. So it was, it was kindly awarded off the queen. So uh, mm. yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. Pretty pretty amazing. Wow. So that's a painting. And that yeah yeah. yeah. Well, I've, it was strange. I did. Um, I've got a photograph that I set up yesterday, a still life, just to sort of give a nod to that past of the military and then the bridge mm. to the art world now. So it's that sort of transitional piece. I rebirth. think they want to paint a yeah, rebirth, yeah, a rebirth of restarting into a into a new um, career, mm. um, and that's that's exciting, you know. You have Absolutely. chapters in your life, but you look back and you then you know you have to look forward as well, you know. And I think that's important that you mm. you know you have those experiences, but you you've got to look. There's there's positives to you know to to go forwards with, and that's mm. really important. So yeah. I hold on to that. Shedding the cocoon and now <laughs> spread your wings. Yeah, yeah. And I think there is that sort of, you know, to create art is, as you say, it's very special. It's that being able to be free on canvas. And it, again, mm. we talk about the mind and how you can, you know, disappear for hours into a painting or, you know, photography mm. or poetry or acting, whatever mm. medium you choose to go and go into. Mm. But that is, can be part of the healing process, you know, to, to take your time to slow down, you know, in life. The life is a, it's funny, you know, on the journey in this morning, you see people running to, to jump off one train that's going to the same destination just to get in two minutes earlier. And, um, you know, thankfully, I'm, I'm not like that anymore, you know, um, become a lot more slowed and considered in, you know, because I think as art, it makes you, makes you do that. And I think that's, Society could benefit from that. Actually, just having a, a restart and a, mm. you know, just take take the time. Like um, a reflection. Reflection is important. All your yeah, actions. yeah. Because of the experiences that you have in life, mm. um, and shape the way that you are. And some of them are good, and some of them are, are not so good. Mm. But those ones that are not so good that you, you know, through treatment. You know, I've had a, an awful lot of help with treatment and that sort of stuff. So mm. that enables you to move on to the next stage and mm. then again keep moving forwards you know i think actually art is a part of human nature yeah. uh Joseph Boyce, um he said that everyone is an artist even someone who's who's you know brooming passing the broom yeah. in the in the space yeah it is art it's an expression and um picasso says that all children, they are all artists. It's yeah. just the environment yeah. that is sh shaping them yeah. and just a criticism, like, you know, this is not good enough. Yeah. Oh, they'd never take a pen again no. in their hands. Yeah. And it's that so, layers, isn't it? It's that layers that we put on ourselves mm, to, mm. to prevent the true inner self where you, you, know, you find that self-actualization of wanting to create, mm. paint, uh, and that freedom that comes with that, the, you know, the ecstasy, the high that you get off of, you know, painting and finishing a painting, yeah. but you have to get through those, unwrapping those layers of, no, you can't do that, no, 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 you know, and once you start to peel those away, mm. then you start to, you know, as an artist, you do start to discover your, your true, your true self, and I think that's really helpful for any creativity, you know, that you're trying mm. to, you know, when you, and you can put that into a painting, you put that passion then mm. into a painting. That's the exciting bit is that, you know, <laughs> you know mm. looking at them and the... And then you can communicate something yeah. and maybe for another person, they pick up totally another story out of it. Yeah. Like, you know, look, your castle on the hill, yeah. you know. The old it's... relic on the hill, that's how I, that's how I see myself. Yeah, but a, the castle the old, on the, the hill, old, you know. You know. <laughs> uh, everyone, you know, you can again think about... Um, you know, memories, or everyone yeah. has different, uh, yeah. comes with their yes. luggage. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so that might mean totally something else. And it's, yeah. uh, someone sees it and might just hold on to that memory that they had in something yeah. similar like yeah. that, or exactly precisely that. Yeah. And I think there's, you know, that when you see works, it, and, um, you know, the feelings you can attach to works as well. You know, mm. there's, there's a lot of 
passion that you can put into a painting. There's a lot of emotion that mm. can go into them. Um, and I think that can be powerful for someone that's then, maybe not now, maybe in years' time, they'll see something and they'll have that connection to it. And I think that's, that fascinates me as well, that how, as, you know, within art, you can, you can put an emotion mm. into, into artwork. Mm. Um, I think absolutely also you make the, um, the lemon vibrate <laughs> yeah. because you put it into contrast to a um, grey jug yeah. and yeah. the colour is really just like baboom. <laughs> But again, I like the you, again the eyes that are on there that sort of the capture the glinty eyes, you know, of him just sort of looking and the, the character. And again, ca capturing character in a painting, mm. you know, that is a that I could, I could, you know, I'd, I could see myself now sat in that jungle, watching, you know, from a distance ah. and just see the rain fall, and the, you know, maybe just picking up a bit of a leaf and you know, yeah. eating and. We can learn so much oh, yeah. from yeah. them. From nature as well, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. You know that actually this is from an article uh, in the news. You know there was, uh, some years ago, there was a toddler in a zoo. Yes, yeah, uh, fell. Falling, yeah. yeah, climbing onto the pram. Mummy is just like, you know, watching or talking. Yeah. And falls into the enclosure yeah. of the gorillas. Yeah. And they were all like, oh, yeah. gasp. And uh, then they did not know what will they do with the gorilla, I mean, with the baby, yeah. uh, with the toddler. And uh, because even to their babies, you know, sometimes the males are not so nice. Yeah. And anyhow, so they were all scared and the, you know, the gorilla was just first poking and, um, and then actually hugging the baby yeah. and accepting it and really taking care of it. So I thought that was really something, you know, we need to take care of the planet. So, uh, yeah. you know, we, learned, we need to learn from their kind of behavior and yeah. their kind of uh, attitude to life and the values, yeah. you know, that uh, they have in their instinctive <laughs> being. Yeah. But you know that um, I found out that gorillas, they have uh, apparently even a religion. Wow. Well, yeah. I think it's Attenborough who said that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, you well. know, so... Um, and the hierarchy that they have, you know, the way they, their, their family set, isn't it? You know, it is. And there's, there's been some great TV as yeah. well about, you know, how, watching them and, and how they, you know, how they interact within their group and, mm. you know, the younger mischief. You know, it's a bit like, you know, when you think about my own teenage sons and that, that boisterous element that they have and, you know, and our, our children that we have, you know, boys or girls. And then, you know, that sort of you know, being able to talk to them and, and try and connect with them. You know, connection is everything. Is, yes. You know, and, and we can learn so much of how animals connect, you know, visually and uh, by touch and, and sight and that sort of mm. stuff. So, you know, it's, it's really important. Do you know where the word gorilla is coming from? It's a quite unusual word, isn't it? Gorilla. It is, yeah, yeah. It's uh, ancient um, Greek oh, because yeah. the old ancient Greek was Horus. Yeah. Uh, he uh, was um, uh, a sailing all the way there to Africa yeah. and uh, in their uh, native tongue they had a guide they said gorilla and that was actually said I mean it, it described a tribe of women oh, right. because yeah. the gorilla they have one male yeah. and then loads of uh, females yeah. and yeah. then with the babies yeah. that's the family and that is, that's actually, well, we still carry the word the gorilla word. these days. So yeah. that's, that's from that travel. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you say about art, the, you know, the, how old art is and, you know, cave yeah. art, you know, and, and animals have been depicted in art, you know, horses and, uh, you know, other animals have always been, you know, there's some really ancient works that are out there. Yes. Um, and that to me is fascinating as well, that people have felt compelled to, to paint animals. Yeah. Absolutely. In south of France, you can go into the caves. It's yeah. so tremendous. Yeah. And they are, you know, well, Lascaux is 17.3, 17,300 um, 17, years old, all yeah. around that time. And you know what they think? That all these points, the tip of the horse, the snout of the horse, the tip of the hoof, etc., when you think the cave away, it's a constellation. It's all, yeah, it's all connected. It's all I connected. don't know how, yeah. you know, that, that is na nature, it's yeah. metaphysics, it's yeah. all connected.
connected here. Yeah. yeah, it's all connected. So we are losing our, you know, our sensitivity for this yeah. intuitive knowledge that is there. Yeah. That is captive for us if we are sensitive enough yeah. to look out for them yeah. Yeah. and then we will have a better life especially together yeah. with all the other habitants of yeah. the earth yeah but as we said about the equine you know the equine therapy side of things you know horses and that connection you know horses have been used to help servicemen um you know, people in communities. Oh, in, yeah, in the yeah. army. Yeah, so, you know, that, that, that sort of uh, work has been, you know, reported. There's a, another well-known charity, Dare to Live, that helps people connect with horses mm. um, and enables them to um, connect inwards, which is really important, and it enables them to, you know, trust horses, you know, and have yeah. that build up that trust and that connection that they have, which then enables that amazing things to happen. Yes, uh, exactly. And um, I believe <laughs> that the horses, they are, um, well, they having an intuitive will. And that's why you have the fence here, but the last fence, so it's not totally enclosed, the last fence is the horse itself. Because I believe that the horses are going towards people. Yeah. If they are special enough. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't, which, yeah, which didn't is. Did you it. have an experience? I did have an experience, yeah, with equine, uh, during the equine therapy side, yeah. So, Dare to Live, we had, uh, we, was, we went down for a pre visit, and on that pre visit, we uh, were asked to go and stand along a fence line and to look out into the field and there was, uh, and to see if we could connect with the horses, and I didn't understand connection. So for me, it was quite a, a, an unusual word that I, I, you know, didn't really sort of grasp. But um, I do now. I do now. And, and that, um, that looking out into the field was fascinating because I sort of looked at this particular horse and it, for me personally, it, it stood out. And I did, you know, felt a, a connection. There was something that mm. just made me look at that. It might have been colour or whatever, but I made a connection. We was then asked put six of us along the line to, to, to sort of just close our eyes, bow our heads and just, you know, stand there for a couple of minutes in the moment, uh, which we did. And then after a couple of minutes, I, I definitely felt a presence near me. And, you know, I come to realise that as humans, we have certain distances that we're used to. And, uh, and the same is with horses. They're very intuitive. And um, I'd had my leg foot forward and my head bowed. And as I rose my head, the horse was opposite me. I could feel its breath, you know, as its nose breathing it out. And it was stood the same way, so it mirrored um, the way I was. So it had its head down, obviously, and it had its leg um, foot forward and the, the foot up. And apparently the horse does that as a, as a connection to... And these horses are traumatised horses. So, but they'd been, you know, looked after. They'd had sort of tough experiences, but they'd come through all that. And they, and they, they do amazing work down there at the, at the charity as well. So... But that experience then was very, very, very powerful. And it gave me that, um, and that's where colour, we're visualising colour in your mind sort of come about. Because they asked me, did you, was there any colours that you could visualise? And I sort of said there was some colours, the purples and golds. And that was, you know, that was, mm. and she made a note and, and that sort of thing. And, and that was powerful, you know, that was a, Colours and then obviously uh, went emotion. on. Yeah, and that, and that, you say about the female, that was the female mare of that collective group of horses. And, uh, you know, and it was a beautiful grey. And, and I meant, stayed then, you know, when I come back to do the course, they said, yeah, we'd like you to come back and then spend some more time down there. And I think we did a week, I think it was a week course. And, uh, you know, we would then walk into the field and it got to that point where they would, they would follow you around a, 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 like a, a little course, you know, that they'd set up. And I'd always been quite nervous as a child of mm. horses from, I think, being a child and going down to the Brighton races and stood at the side and these horses gallop past and it, I think it must have, you know, surprised me or shook me, did not understand it. Mm. Um, but by the end of that, I, the horse come up and put its, rested its head on your shoulder. I mean, oh. it's just powerful, absolutely powerful. It's and I, they then had, uh, we then sort of made, not these, but similar type things mm. with horse hair because of the smell was comforting. So again, using mm. touch, feel and a sense of smell where they would, you know, clean the horses down, that sort of stuff. So. 
Wonderful. Yeah, that connection with animals is is yeah, it's powerful. It's powerful very thing. special. Yeah. yeah. But you have to be open for that, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. that is uh, really wonderful yeah. that you had that. And that's why seeing the painting, you know, it's that's why it's, again, I you know, this I have a real connection, a feel for the, mm. you know, for horses and uh, and that obviously that I you know, love the love the painting. I so, know that, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I love your story. Yeah. Well, thank you. And that's where we're here now.